The Late Morning Program with Nam Ras Podcast. Is that what you trained in? Or you yeah, said, yeah, that's what I... So, but what was the changing factor? Many people in Ashtanga also injure themselves mm-hmm. without doing it in the right technique. Mm. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, everyone. You're listening to the Namras Podcast, the number one Hare Krishna podcast in the world. I'm super honored to have Gornat Raj Prabhu here for the third... Third time. Third time. Hat trick. For the hat trick on the... Uh, Nam Ross podcast again. Vibhuti, my uh, Venkata Bhatta, my um, co-host. Thanks for joining. Also for this. Be here. Yep. So, for those of you who don't know, Gornataraj Prabhu is a. I mean, I can't say so enough about you because you have, you do so many things. But you know the term I I was thinking about this on the on the drive over. There used to be this term, a Renaissance man. Renaissance man, right? And the Renaissance <laughs> man was like a scholar, so he was in the life of the mind. But he was also, you know, an artist and also yes. like an athlete. And it was just this like holistic yeah. kind of ideal, which maybe, I'm, I'm not so sure of the history, but somehow was lost. But then you have, yep. you have these examples. I'm, I'm, I'm of, really honored. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, Gornat Raj Prabhu is a almost very close to being a PhD in Ayurveda, uh, an author, a yogi, yoga teacher, coach, um, business owner, ghee maker, ghee maker. <laughs> herbal ghee maker. Anyway, Giwala, yeah. <laughs> we've been talking about this all day today and it's just been a fantastic conversation. Personally getting his input on my health, personally, my family's health, my children's health, how to follow things according to Ayurveda, which is really interesting. And, um, I want to change things about my health, uh, you know, for the, for the good and for the longevity of my life, Prabhu has a lot of experience in that. So, um, I did want to start off with talking about, if you want to know about Gornad Raj Prabhu more, watch the first two episodes that we did with him. But this one specifically, Prabhu, I wanted to talk about the point you made when we were speaking earlier today about how to get to when we join bhakti, we also have to kind of regulate ourselves before we jump in and and get what bhakti has to offer. It's not just we just do it and we continue to hold on to all our bad habits and maybe things that we can't control and things like we have to kind of work those things out to get bhakti's full, um, the practice and everything in our lives. Or do we? You know, maybe that's I know. Like- so or or question. do it yeah because yeah. because that's a that's a challenge I brought to you that also right it says that bhakti in itself can fulfill everything yeah we don't need to do any extra things but yet you're telling me that there are these extra things that we need to do before which in the Bhagavad Gita says yoga ladder right that's part of that right well yeah I mean it is but then but then also even anecdotally I can say I mean years ago when 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 I was first sort of becoming more and more um, involved with Krishna consciousness, with Bhakti, with ISKCON as an organization, it was almost like a constant refrain was, you know, Bhakti is perfect and complete in and of itself. You don't need to do this. Other paths, you need to do this. There's so many prerequisites, but, you know, Bhakti, there used to be all these analogies. Every other path is like taking these stairs up and Bhakti is like the, you know, Ele- express elevator, escalator, yeah, lift. Yeah. it just takes you straight up and all this stuff. So, you know, I feel like for so many of us, and I don't think I'm the only one, right? I, I, you could probably relate to this, Nam, as well. And maybe Gornatra, maybe you heard things like this when you were first coming around. But I think for so many of us, we've just internalized so deeply that like, yes, to think about doing anything else, what to speak of to say, well, first we should do this and then we should go to Bhakti. It's almost like, that's like, it's like blasphemy a, or exactly. something. Exactly, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Which is very true. <clears throat> Bhakti is complete in itself. But are we performing what it says in the scriptures? That's the question. Any Sunday feast or any program that I go and I ask whoever is sitting there, how many of you can chant undisturbed? And many of them are chanting from many years. Mm. Almost 95% of the hands go up. The others were 
the others might not raise the hand but literally everyone is struggling mm. right right why so that's the biggest thing how many of us just ask that question when you chant the holy name you are supposed to get tears in your eyes gor gobind maharaj says if you don't have tears if your hairs do not stand on end there's something wrong with our chanting mm. and he says that and 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 when i look at the traditional vedic way of chanting like i try to put these two together so i was born in of course a brahmin family of course and we go through this upanayan right we put the brahmin thread yeah and that time somebody comes to teach you how to chant the gayatri mm. and in that rigveda sandhya vandanam you you know do achman and chant these mantras and you smell like you take water <laughs> you smell out and throw the papa purusha from your body mm. okay at the end of the ritual and I put it in him in the water and i throw him back okay so i am no sin or sinful mentality and it says pranayam even yoga so now i have balanced my body mind intelligence in a balanced frame means i am not lamenting my past i am not in a mood of frustration i am not in a mood of anger i am not jealous or anything i am in a balanced state of mind to receive the mantra mm right it completely balanced and then the gayatri is chanted in the mind and the mantra should flow through your channels it really takes you to another dimension mm. and i had that the <laughs> i mean in college i used to chant the mantra so much but then got into many bad habits as as any kid does in school college and the other time i had the best experience when i smoked marijuana <laughs> in college <laughs> and There's my friend something similar something it. similar yeah, yeah. so the mantra i i imagine myself at that time this was before i came to krishna consciousness so uh, the first time i took you know weed or whatever and i was seeing did you know this episode was going to go here <laughs> no i didn't <laughs> folks this is why you got to tune into the podcast you never know we're like 5 minutes in and prabhu is already talking about his experience with weed i love it anyway i'm sorry go ahead before krishna consciousness <laughs> before, krishna. before yes no one cut, <laughs> cut this stuff cut it, it up so um i was seeing myself standing on one leg other leg on my shoulder and i'm standing on the banks of uh, of of uh, ocean and the mantra is flowing in the air om bhur bhuvah swaha <laughs> that's right? awesome it was beautiful <laughs> and just a few days after that i had the bhagavad gita course in my college and then there was kirtan and i joined but that effect that mantra that experience left me shocked and i read in shiva samhita that what you get and and when I came to krishna consciousness i heard be stay high forever yes and that was very interesting stay high forever <laughs> and that really inspired me too and my quest from then to now mm. has been to reach that stage where when you chant your mind is absolutely quiet when you sit to chant you are absolutely surrendered to krishna to such a point that even if any thought comes to you hey you know what this bill is pending you just surrender to krishna mm. you don't start problem solving you don't start fighting your thoughts your mind brings up thoughts for you to fight and many of these when you sit to chant after you chant you don't even remember or you don't even need them but at that point it's because when the mantra goes through your channels it opens up any impurity that's there that's why pranayama vini yoga pranayama comes before the chanting of the mantra where when you chant you only resound the holy name you are just surrendered nothing affects you nothing affects you but are we at that point when you sit down to chant i make a few vows that really change my chanting for example that for the next 2 hours it's me and krishna that's it 
I'm not going to think what happened in my past, what am I going to be in the future. I'm just going to surrender. I'm just going to hear the holy name and just meditate on the holy name. Just think of Lord's lotus feet. And that attitude, then I gave a couple of seminars on that. Uh, uh, after I experienced like a real focused healed chanting and many devotees uh, whom I did this like online workshops with and and they really came back and said, Prabhu, this is really helping us. We are able to, if not two hours, at least the first one hour or something. But then it becomes, see, you also need energy mm. to be really focused for two hours. Now, the thing is, what we see, we are chanting for how long? Two hours. The, what about the rest 22 when you talk about bhakti? Right? And we are given a discipline. Don't overeat. Atyahara. Don't struggle too much. Prayasa. Prajalpa. Don't idly talk. Niyamagraha. Don't break the rules or don't stick to the rules just for the sake of it. Hmm? Janasanga. Don't associate with worldly people. Laulyam. You know, don't be greedy or, you know, thirst. Shadbir. Bhakti vinashyati. It's not a small thing. Now, are we disciplined enough that the rest of the 22 hours, rest of the 22 hours, that you are able to keep all these rules intact? That you don't overeat. You are very aware. Mm. I'm not overeating. Why? This is sadhana bhakti. And where does it say? It says in Ayurveda that your lifestyle, your routine such should be such that you are always in Sattva Guna and remember Narayana. So it is defined as Sadhana Bhakti in Ayurveda and uh, in the Yoga Shastras also to keep ourselves alert and in Sattva. If you are there, that Sattva, Shuddha Sattva, pure Sattva, where Rajo and Tamaguna are almost you know, minimal, you cannot eliminate them, it's minimal. Then, yes, Bhakti easily comes to you. But are we at that stage? Then you need to prepare to be on that stage. Mm -hmm. So that is why we also have stages in Bhakti, right? We, although we say it's uh, uh, Anartha Nivruti is the longest. Right? Cleansing your nerves. Why does Krishna tell Uddhava in uh, the... Uddhava Gita, that first do Nadi Shodhana Pranayama, first cleanse all your nerves, cleanse the mind, and then remember me. Mm. What's normally taught is that uh, just add Krishna to your life. Mm. And that's kind of a simplistic way of putting it. See, if Would you, you say that? Yeah, so if you make, that is to give you a simplistic view that you just add it, right? Now, how, just like when Prabhupada met Gaur Gobind Maharaj for the first time, he said, I'll give you sannyas. Because he was already there. See, that is why if you look at the Yoga Sutras, it doesn't generalize. Right? Everyone is at a different stage of evolution. Everyone is at of their spiritual life from many, many births. Mm. Some of us, like in Udupi, for example, the Udupi Swamis, by birth, when you pick up their chart, oh, they are already sannyasi. So they are given sannyas at young age because previous life, they already practiced renunciation. This life, they have come here to finish it. So when I looked at my horoscope, I was also, uh, my mom went to, a, as I became, as soon as I became a devotee, my mom went to an astrologer to check if I'll, you know, what what's wrong with him, <laughs> whether he will finish his engineering, whether he'll, whether he'll become a sannyasi. He looked at the horoscope and said, no chance of sannyas. Mm -hmm. Okay, he'll get married, don't worry. But he's a yogi. He came to finish his yoga in this life. Mm -hmm. He kind of got disturbed in his previous life and he could not finish it. So this life is here to finish it. So my mom was like, okay, <laughs> but he's still getting married. So that was... But as I saw, as things turned out in my life, I saw that it gave me the practice of yoga, how to integrate this? Because I felt this was my calling. But how do I integrate this? Then I saw one verse and I was in this difficult stage of diabetes. 
where forget chanting i was i i couldn't be active more than an hour or two i couldn't chant there was no energy i couldn't do anything i had to get out of this i had to come out so every one of all of us have a story some good habits some bad habits everybody goes through so in my case at this point i was looking for hope and i was reading this book called yoga rahasya and in this book nath muni the founder of shri vaishnavism he says that which cannot be cured by anything else can be cured by the practice of ashtanga yoga by with the surrender to narayana hmm. he actually also brings up the verse he, he says asana for example so asana prayatne saithilya ananta samapatti bhyam what is the perfection of asana when you perform it easily remembering the ananta ananta samapatti bhyam so that is the perfection of asana now why is this important so i was at this point in life because after i came to krishna consciousness went through so many things and then because of my previous discipline or indiscipline i got into this serious health issue now how do i come out of it and that became a turning point you had full on diabetes full on diabetes okay and my sugar and now was, you don't now i don't i had sugar like 300 or something fasting and same thing traveling too much late night programs late night dinners you know too much uh, actually traveling literally tears up your body and not taking proper precaution proper anyway but at that point when i read that verse he said everything that you do that fosters bhakti is sadhana bhakti including yoga it can be anything but it should be balanced such that it leads you to the ultimate goal of chanting the holy name of the lord mm. he calls every step sadhana bhakti now if you look at bhagavad gita like we were discussing yeah the the karma yoga comes first because with karma yoga you get jnana you have to be detached you have to stop enjoying the material world you have to learn to give back karma yoga you have to learn to give back to the lord give back to the world give back to the lord S- develop a sense of giving detachment mm. right then you get knowledge you get higher knowledge who the lord gives you the knowledge in the heart jnana but with jnana with that knowledge itself you cannot come to bhakti but what do you need with that knowledge again your detachment becomes strengthened right vairagya but just with vairagya you could go astray so what do you need the next chapter ashtanga he says discipline hmm. so when you combine the detachment knowledge with the discipline right detachment knowledge with the discipline then you are ready to enter into bhakti the seventh chapter that's why he says by the time you reach here you are living for the bare minimum i am not eating sunday feast to enjoy i go there i eat as much as i need just because something is there in a full pot it doesn't mean i should eat the whole thing i should eat isha vasyam like everything is for the lord and i should eat my part only that is enough to keep me energetic for my devotional service if i over eat that's it you are not disciplined right so युक्ताहार विहार से युक्त चेष्ट से कर्मसु युक्त स्वप्न अवबोध से योगो भवति दुःखः सो बिफोर यू एंटर द सेवन चैप्टर कृष्णा इज टेलिंग गेट इन टू द डिसिप्लिन एंड पेन फ्री लाइफस्टाइल हील योरसेल्फ एंड दैट कैन बी डन विद डिसिप्लिन राइट सो यू आर गेटिंग इनटू भक्ति बट इन योर बिगिनिंग स्टेज दैट इज साधु संग राइट Uh, then anartho nivritti right bhajana kriya then anartha nivritti so your bhajana kriya anartha nivritti this is the longest stage right all of us have to go through this cleansing stage so cleansing stage depends upon what depends on the quality of our chanting quality of our chanting depends on what what do you do the rest of your day 22 hours that's it yeah. so if we haven't resolved that see some very 
few rare souls like muni of our gurus who met propad they come with such sukriti from their past lives they are already in that bhakti platform but most of us are not most of us come from like you know regular background or we are children of devotees but we have uh, some sukriti but we have our past also which we have come to overcome yeah. and that is ayurveda that's what i found intriguing in ayurveda because ayurveda is, the end goal of ayurveda is also liberation and bhakti and ayurveda it asks you to self diagnose because in ayurveda lust anger greed attachment madness and enviousness are diseases of the mind for example diabetes one of the causative factors is uncontrolled eating and anger causative factor so in ayurveda it gives you that of course every medicine krishna says i am the herb mm. every medicine that you take in ayurveda it has to be taken with the name of lord narayana so you understand your ultimate shelter is narayana only he can cure you because these are very difficult and this turns into a physical disease now suddenly i come to krishna consciousness when i came few days ago i was smoking marijuana now it's not easy to suddenly become free from the effects right because patanjali says of course in the yoga sutras this was something that changed something that changed me completely and and after i after understanding this clearly when i looked at devotees who fell down or devotees having difficulties um this verse kind of help me where patanjali says that if your sadhana becomes weak the most dangerous thing about a yogi is when your sadhana becomes weak your samskaras your previous samskaras so when you chant when you come to spiritual life your bad habits kind of they go in the background they are not gone away mm. they you never go away recede to the background they recede to the background yeah when you become weak they are waiting to strike you mm. i was speaking to a pastor i was telling namras and we were talking about how even the priests in christianity padres have difficulty controlling themselves there are so many incidents of abuse he says even you like i was speaking to this pastor says, even you are a krishna's habit so like he knew not, he knew what he who, who he was talking to yeah, yeah. so i said he he also said the same thing what he found even in christianity this padre told me he was doing phd in uh, uh the really? quality of pastors all right and he said those pastors who focused more on external maintenance fundraising for the church or this is the most important thing rather than cultivating the people and their heart and spirituality those who got into too much you know like external mm. they were just getting into like big money schemes and and this thing and everyone instead of prayer it's not that you can't raise money you have to balance it with devotion devotion being the primary and when you get into just some churches or some places you see it's just the theme is you know to grow bigger things like that but without the spiritual quality what he meant to say he he did a phd and he found that those who actually followed cultivating the people giving them steps to improve their situation spiritual situation improve it and they themselves engaged such churches were doing well they may have medium but they were doing really well in terms of quality of people cultivation and same thing happens with us moment your sadhana goes down your bad samskaras your previous bad for some people it may be deadly for some people who are into drugs who were into some kind of maybe even porn or something like that it really comes back and i have been dealing with devotees i have been doing a, a personality development with a lot of young devotees and i was shocked that they were still into porn and i had to take them step wise sadhana to de addict them and still after 6 months it so it's it's, it's whole, improved yeah. it's improved mm. but there's a long way to go yeah so what i see is that 
your bad habit may be gross or may be subtle over eating which we may consider innocent you know it's a festival eat a little bit more is a festival. but one day lost in chanting it could become a chain reaction when you over eat one day so much in the name of a festival i have had several devotees whom i am coaching right now in my ayurveda group and they say uh, after sunday feast it takes us two days it's not that so they should blame i said one thing we have to understand in the end we can't blame if you really want to grow spiritually stop blaming others so to stop blaming the feast <laughs> okay i said take responsibility but the feast is just there this is there it's for the everybody fact that it's there doesn't mean that i have to i have to eat yeah, yeah. see yeah. it's meant I for everybody point, even a yeah. newcomer and that introspection even help me because many a times we blame everybody else every other situation and we don't grow yeah when you take responsibility now you should not be too depressed also and i learned this from jayadev maharaj he said that rupa goswami said don't be too depressed i am too fallen no relax <laughs> you are yeah. not too anything you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are just yeah. you are just there so you have to the only problem that i see uh, that 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 we did not have and which i feel i'm happy with my phd because you need the right resources that's what we lack in our society and 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 i'm writing the book on ayurveda and just finished the book on mudras i showed you yeah. it's come out so good and the ayurveda book both will be simultaneously released next month but what i saw was if you get the right tools right like uh, if i eat right eating right it is so critical to bhakti over eating bhakti vinashyati it's serious it's serious you are just overeating can make you sleepy then i want to chant gone finished time lost yeah just because of overeating if i could do the portion control right so one feeds into the other your chanting your quality of chanting your quality of exercise your quality of yoga so if we have the right path like fasting is my body type the right for fasting i did quite a bit of fasting during covid lot of people joined me for the fasting and it was very you know it changed but as i learned more you cannot fast all the time a fast is a start okay but then you have to get into a regular routine the crux of ayurveda is dinacharya rutucharya dinacharya is a solid routine like i remember one of my friends uh, in i was in mangalore right i was born and brought up in mangalore and in mangalore uh, there was a old shiva temple with a beautiful like a divine tank it said ganges water flows even today there so there was this person who used to wake up every morning at 5 o'clock he walks like 3 kilometers and takes a dip and comes back walking because that is his sadhana and he's been doing it for like 50 years i heard this is like never because for him that is the most important sadhana i was like that was i was very little but as i grew i realized we have to chant every day quality rounds every morning and this example i was like this man did it for 50 years yeah and and still like what do you do with what happens when you chant well you do more chanting you get more attracted you become more disciplined and then if i over eat i'm always thinking oh it's going to affect my chanting i don't over eat right so you get into that discipline but if you are already disciplined you don't have to do that but what if you are not so that's the question yeah so that's where we need the right tools yeah. so when i read this verse and i started doing the ashtanga yoga at one point in the beginning of my krishna consciousness i could sit down and chant my 16 rounds in one in one sitting and sitting with back straight and everything but then i went through this traveling a lot eating a lot and my sadhana went down and to come back i just prayed to narayana and this practice gradually brought me back to life and then i could sit in the lotus pose chant 16 rounds without worry and and as i gained back i cherish it so much but it was a big learning 
that you deviate a little bit yeah. one friend told me a rocket if it's 1 degree deviated at the base it's by the time it reaches space it's like way off it's way off so little bit over eating little bit prajalpa i'm not doing so much i'm deviating little bit That's but the powerful, overall result that's such a powerful analogy right yeah. because yeah when the the rocket is at the you know whatever from the launching Launch pad, pad that one degree seems like inconsequential and it's like oh, what are you worried about but the ultimate effect could be devastating right and and so similarly i want to just go back a little bit and maybe dig in a little bit deeper because um i mean so much is coming to mind yeah but one thing just again on that theme of sort of unlearning some of the you know in the name of bhakti maybe some some of the kind of misunderstandings that we have about this one of the things that i i remember also hearing and and maybe even repeated to others was that you know a lot of this these warnings about things like overeating and whatever just as you said our tendency is sometimes we blame the the externals mm-hmm. or we we blame the objects rather than take responsibility ourselves I feel like the flip side is also we can like artificially what I would call like transcendentalize. So here's what I mean, right? Um I remember hearing from devotees uh yeah, so there's these warnings about overeating, but that doesn't apply to Mahaprasad. Because Mahaprasad is transcendental. Take all the halava you take need. Take all the, you know, because it and it's 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 almost like and I remember even then kind of thinking like, eh, this is a little bit, you know, <laughs> off because it was like if you just can put the word transcendental in front of something <laughs> <laughs> right like we talk about like transcendental competition oh that's a great yeah. thing but just putting the word transcendental doesn't necessarily take something that's fundamentally an an unhealthy practice it doesn't magically make it healthy right yeah. exactly see if we look at our acharyas right um, like rupa goswami or they used to eat so less right they could sustain with the, the devotional prana it was so good right it was so powerful and they used to organize so many programs like preaching program this that and there was so much food everywhere but they hardly ate right so if we we'll, and i used to think at that point that will we be able to reach this stage right where you are completely withdrawn so that is in uh, pratyahara prati ahara right you withdraw from ahara you minimize it yeah in the beginning stage yes you eat a lot to get inspired and you know everything <laughs> but then everybody becomes fat <laughs> or develops a belly right and many people i know within our own you know right now most maharajas have their own cook right with, with very particular cooking standards yeah. they cannot just eat general although it's prasad everybody is very That's particular right yeah. everybody has their particular what they want to eat the only thing what we are doing is what we cook is the quality of what we cook we just offer it to the lord right that said but whatever co- we have cooked whatever quality we have energy we have put in that is still the same right for example one of the things i discovered was that seed oils they burn your liver now it doesn't become it doesn't change i met one devotee who was left in a temple when he was a young age young boy his parents wanted him to become serious devotee which is good i met this devotee in one place and uh, he had a uh throat surgery gash big gash here i was like what happened I said i was in in the temple and because i was a little kid everybody fed me sweets since young and he ended up with a tumor here after many years and they had to remove it surgically he told me krishna can eat any amount not us <laughs> ma prasad okay we have a limited capacity and our if we look at the example of acharyas they only ate less not more they they wanted to give devotion means to give not take right food you take minimum for you to just to keep your body and mind body and soul 
together right that's it but we need to eat what i realized as i went on if somebody cooks in canola oil or this or that it doesn't change the quality right what did proper do proper if after he came if you read the early books he taught his disciples how to make ghee first and then cook the sunday feast why did he do that seed oil was already available right mm. vegetable oil canola oil all this oil was available but why did propad insist on ghee propad writes in gita nagari that the agni in the stomach is lord narayana and he is pleased when you cook with ghee he writes in gita nagari this is yagya that yagya is successful only with ghee so oil is for the outside ghee is for the inside in ayurveda now the same principle propad followed now if somebody cooks in canola oil or this or that when you offer it to the lord you are giving already giving something which is not according to the scripture number 1 right and propad wanted ghee how does the quality change when you offer it how does that become healthy or something like that right of course it's <laughs> offered like i was in this temple and i won't tell any temple name i don't want any controversy <laughs> so they used to make light khichdi right other one was with chili and lot of oil and stuff so the one without too much oil spices everything they used to call it health khichdi so i was asking the devotee what do you call the other one <laughs> unhealthy kichdi <laughs> general kichdi what they, yeah what do they call it they call <laughs> so this is health kichdi what is that so it's funny so we also realize that we have to eat right we some things we are over eating but what i found was everyone recognizes this right and today more so why because 41% of america is pre diabetic You told me that earlier today. I was just like blown away. Forty-one percent. Just That's, Google. Yeah. Forty-one percent. Yeah. Just Google what percentage of in India. It's not so obvious because everybody has it, but it, the numbers are not tested here. Everyone is tested, right? In the U.S. So forty-one percent. So every second devotee is coming to you today <laughs> might be pre-diabetic, <laughs> right? So yeah. And 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 actually, what I saw. in ayurveda when you eat too much okay you get the quality of attachment you get attached you over eat more your quality gets worse right that's what is in and in pitta if you eat too spicy too hot everything what happens your jealousy it is said when your body reflects that heat you become jealous naturally mm. envious and in vata you become anxious overthinking when your air is imbalanced i was surprised and it says by balance by eating balanced diet balanced diet offered to the lord when you eat quality quality herbs because in ayurveda all the herbs are offered to the lord herbs you know the quality the ghee all these things these are offered offered but eaten in the right quantity in the right way according to your body type then you will be able to balance yourself so that's the thing something that comes to mind is that as devotees we don't have much enjoyment as it is and you're telling us to even bring it lower down more and more like Food is like the one. It's like the one like the thing one that we have that we like really kind of like say like oh we don't have anything else but this is like this is like my one like sense gratification yeah. or but then to hear this is like it's a, it's a so so here's the thing what we don't recognize here the modern world they spin the foods to be addictive if you watch the movie fast food a nation. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. They they pour food additives taste into everything. For example, I was speaking to two bhakti vriksha leaders separately and they were surprised soy cannot be offered. <laughs> they were surprised. But we eat soy so much. Why do we need to eat imitation meat? 
Why do we need? I thought you wanted to avoid controversy. This is, <laughs> right? this is now you're, get, you're, getting, controversy. you're getting into and, controversial and, and, territory and, here, Prabhu. And and this soy, I I asked this to the uh, North American. There was the pujari, you know, in New Vrindavan many years ago, and yeah. I asked the head pujari whether it is offered. He said no. You can't offer it. So how can we eat it? I don't. I I didn't do the next question because <laughs> everyone was already getting anxious. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> You're cutting major food supply, right? He's like, I didn't ask the next question because the Bujari was eating an Impossible Burger yeah. while I was speaking to him. But no. <laughs> so, so, so this episode of the Namras podcast has been brought to you by Beyond Meat. But Beyond Meat, find yeah. Beyond Meat in your no meat. Local, local Whole Foods. Whole Foods, yeah. So, so anyway, so what I realized at that point was we are so much used to Rajasik taste. Yeah. Mm. That's our problem, because of the what do you call green revolution, right? There was so much wheat and rice as a guaranteed crop, so everybody made varieties of it: bread, this, that, commercial bread. Like in America, if you eat bread, right? They knew that within one day, commercial bread doesn't have any nutrition. It's gone within one day of making it. they realized that it's not nutritious so then they said ha let's add iron let's add you see there is 101 ingredients right yeah. um b2 then uh, thymine niacin. niacin i was like what yeah. is all this this is all vitamin b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 b6 all these vitamins because there is no nutrient you add these nutrients but interestingly nothing digests right like today they have protein isolate right what do you call the protein drink yeah. protein shakes yeah but why did krishna give dal like peas or peas like so that you can isolate the pea protein no he wanted you to eat the whole, whole meal yeah whole protein but I mean, how do you know that though which one that he the natural state the pea. natural because state it, because in it's ayurveda you're saying it's it, it, in ayurveda occurring. ayurveda right. it says the essence in eating the whole food in controlled way it gives you the complete essence the way the food is supposed to digest i see it's in the digestion interestingly just if if, if i may forget the thing that attracted me to ayurveda and yoga and connected to krishna consciousness was the center theme central theme both of them yoga and ayurveda the central theme is to activate agni in other words to please the lord to activate because agni is the lord mm. your body is self intelligent it's not self it's the lord who is directing it and he is giving you the intelligence he is making the body move right when you eat the right food the right amount the lord is pleased when you overeat the lord is displeased so that's when eating becomes sadhana you are pleasing the lord right there right when you over exercise you are misusing the body you are over using the organs you are meant to do a certain thing so that's why identifying the body type is very important in ayurveda then you decide how much you want to eat how much you need with intelligence right so unfortunately what happened <clears throat> we were flooded with rice and wheat and if you go to amazon and read the book wheat belly and and that doctor he explains how today's wheat is the most toxic today's wheat and 95% of his patients when they quit wheat most of their allergies went away colitis went away so many problems went away even a uh, lot of inflammation went away but that is our major food we are eating highly inflamed foods today so i did a 6 month diet only vegetables and protein dal sprouts and ghee no grains okay no rice no rice no chapati no idli no vada <laughs> my favorite no dosa just vegetable stir fry or sprout okay 6 months and i only got stronger because that that was the 6 months i got got out of diabetes as well but i realized you really don't need that much grain if i did that i would just be grouchy all the time <laughs> so <clears throat> so here's the thing 
<coughs> the one thing that kept me going is the practice is the sadhana mm mm-hmm. is when i was able to sit in lotus pose 2 hours chant it gave me so much satisfaction i am able to do it right when i did my 1 and 1/2 hours ashtanga yoga at the end of it uh, my friend yogi charu used to always encourage me mm-hmm. i used to always call him whenever i needed help and he always encouraged me say do you don't you feel fresh in the body mind and intelligence said yes <laughs> so you you're talking about literally like a higher taste right yeah, you actually yeah you are actually experiencing something on the positive end that gives you the strength to deal with everything you're saying in theory like i can't argue with it exactly but can i just tell you and and we don't have to you know we can go other places there's there's so many interesting things to discuss i don't want to hang us up here but i just have to be honest with you this is like my i feel like this is my main sort of like stumbling block mm. with it just it feels so like harsh it feels like such yes. a bummer yes like and 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 i've i've spoken to so many devotees practitioners from other traditions other lineages yogis teachers you know ayurvedic experts like yourself and it like it all makes sense conceptually but it's like it just feels like it's such a um it's just such a disappointment on every like i'm i'm just like sitting in fear as you as you keep describing things you're like you i like as soon as you started saying protein shake i was like oh my gosh that goes my morning <laughs> like i love my protein shakes in the morning god you know um bread i'm like you know all this stuff and it feels very um and i i do you know in all seriousness i do want to hear you know what you might advise someone like me who great question i'm i'm not maybe it's just my psychology or whatever but it just feels so all or nothing yes. that my mind goes okay then nothing then then i'm just like not going to do ayurveda <clears throat> and this is like everyone i've to- I've spoken with about ayurveda i always walk away feeling like it's so all or nothing and i just can't do it So I want to say something before you answer Prabhu. The thing that I totally relate with what you're saying, but the thing that opened uh this up for me that could be a possibility is walking through the hospital to see my dad in the hospital when he had a heart when he had heart uh disease and then a heart surgery being like looking at the misery that was there in him in all the people that i was walking like and seeing through the doors and being like i can, do can not we, can we say what the, what the surgery was do you you feel comfortable yeah, saying yeah yeah open a heart uh, he had a quadruple bypass bypass yeah like it was block there was four blockages yeah yeah so the, and, and 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 my father and like your dad um just for context is someone that generally i would not have considered like an unhealthy person right right He's not someone that like you just look at him and you go, "Oh my gosh, this person is just like, you know, a ticking time bomb." Like if if anything I would have thought the opposite. I would have thought this is someone who's relatively healthy. Yeah. Right? Yes. But yeah, so that's that's powerful. Go on, please. Yeah, so that that experience of going there and him being in the hospital for like a month and and just seeing him and experiencing what he was experiencing, yeah. thinking that if I change something right now about my life, I could you know save myself from being in his position right and so that just that little bit opened me up to be like maybe prabhu or all these other devotees who are telling us that you need to change your diet you need to exercise more you need to do this you need to do that it might seem harsh but i feel it's like more harsh when later on in life you're like i i could have reversed this sure let me tell you one incident okay <clears throat> so this devotee my very good friend i won't reveal his name and everything but he came to las vegas for a conference and i saw he was literally a stick a lean tall sticky like stick and i asked him prabhu what's going on it looks like you know another you know little bit and you are so bony he's already so skinny so he said his heart was 80% blocked and doctors had advised him a bypass surgery 
and he was on a vegan diet for a year so vegan diet literally was like no oil vegan and no oil and literally he was just eating boil 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 you know like he was completely boiled so he was and i told prabhu <clears throat> like this you will be so nutrition you know depleted and very soon your heart heart will be calcified okay so what do you suggest prabhu i said i will give you my trikatu ghee okay trikatu ghee is uh, trikatu is ginger long pepper and uh, black pepper piper longa and black pepper okay so this three mix in ayurveda it is to break down fat in your body bad fat or even fat or improve digestion so we make that ghee called trikatu ghee so i gave this to i told him take 6 spoon per day what prabhu 6 spoons per day I said you try and see if this is your last hope give it a try okay because it was not easy to convince him also but he was ready to try it that was the best part a month later he sends me his cholesterol his good cholesterol had increased 40% his bad cholesterol had decreased 40% okay then i said okay now add sun salutations 15 minutes and i gave him ashwagandha ghee also i added little more with that his complete cholesterol profile changed and he was taking statins even that he almost reduced to nil wow and i had even i had heard how ghee is so powerful but this was a practical opportunity even for me i spoke to him i said we know this works but yours is an extreme case we want to give it a try and he was ready to try it and i saw it worked now with so many other people i am seeing that just taking the quality ghee <coughs> their cholesterol is balanced energy levels are good sugar is balanced lot of when i put on my facebook saying uh, i am in my final semester my my thesis has been approved of reversing diabetes lot of devotees who had diabetes they connected with me now i gave them a routine a lifestyle and a chanting they say they are enjoying it because see when you are good health when you are in good health all these things seem, seem to be a trouble because i am happy i am enjoying but once your health is bad you only pray for good health mm-hmm. okay <laughs> you when you are when you are able to move that's what i did i pushed my body to the max in traveling over eating all these programs this that i pushed my body i did not realize that if it breaks down it's very difficult to get it back so we have to be we have to understand these principles why this over eating is there right when you are in your 20s 30s you can do anything but when it gets to 40s your body begins to sound and alarm like you are seeing people die of sudden heart attacks lot of incidents in india recently us also and it's not sudden mm. it's built up over many years nothing is sudden even diabetes is not sudden you have stressed your body to such a point so the point is one incident i'll tell you in reply to your earlier question about the bummer thing even i was kind of frustrated i have to practice this one and a half hour yoga every day to fight off my diabetes right so i went to india my god brother who was training me at that point and he saw my practice i'm like too hard i was pushing myself i have to perfect it i have to push myself he said prabhu you will kill yourself if you push too hard like this I said what should i do i have to do this right i'm i'm like you know if you don't enjoy you won't last long mm. you will give it up you have to enjoy this then he said every breath think of narayana he is infusing you with life enjoy it be slow be calm that calmness is also narayana so then i started slowly practicing that one pep talk changed my whole outlook mm. now i don't look out look up to my practice as a burden every time i finish i'm like so fresh intelligence is fresh like this phd i really thought my god how am i going to write this 
because i had to write a replica before i really write my thesis i had to write you know yeah, everything x and i had to write it so methodically show them all the calculations how many people i'll recruit for my reversing phd or uh, rever- reversing diabetes how many people i'll do with this all the calculations how the step wise it's going to work cost analysis everything it was getting so heavy but the every day i would practice calmly and then sit down i wrote and then i got the best marks in the semester i was the top but it was i saw the more i got calmer the more i relaxed the more i enjoyed and as the practice got better my food control got even better mm. as soon as you eat uh, practice yoga you you don't feel like eating too much you are like very calm you want to hold your there is no hunger and when your body is right when your body is balanced your hunger sparks right hunger then you eat the right amount you enjoy eating that right amount right kids for kids you can mix anything a little bit you know pasta and all that stuff like millet pasta my wife makes okay not white flour for the kids things like that but you you really are not attracted because you see how good you feel with your sadhana with your yoga with your chanting you feel really your body and mind well balanced you don't want to disturb it mm. you get into that sensitive mode so my point of trying to get that across to you is until you enjoy this discipline it's difficult once you enjoy it it becomes easy it's all we say right chanting yeah. it's the taste once you get the taste you will enjoy it and that's the point you have to come to i always think of that phrase would you rather it, it, i actually have it a post it note on my on my wall it's two boxes and it says which one do you choose <laughs> the pain of discipline or the pain of regret <laughs> mm. <laughs> which one do you choose you can choose one Well, right. so you sh- it should be the pain of discipline because the pain of regret is like it's, all, it's pretty heavy. Yeah. Very much. What like, did you feel about his his answer? I'm I'm still processing. I mean I I like it and I and I think for me that's part of that's I want to really try to reflect on where I can find that enjoyment, that mm. nourishment, yeah. that like the positive piece. So I appreciate that. Um I think the thing that one of the things I still struggle with and maybe it's just something I just need to take the leap is I think my mind I want some version I want like Ayurveda light right I want some <laughs> version of it where it's like <laughs> you know what I mean like where it's like okay you can have a cheat day or like yeah, yeah. you know like eat more of this do and, you have a cheat you know, day at all Do you do cheat day? I mean, did, did you in your process of getting to where you are now? Did you ever have yeah, a cheat yeah, day? Yeah, yeah, cheat day. See, definitely. See, for example, uh, I would say the day things get too hectic. Okay, for example, it's me and my wife. We make all the ghee. We make all the teas. Everything ourselves. Okay, yeah. and some days we have a lot of orders. We have to manufacture, label it, and that those days I can't do anything much. So when I don't practice. <laughs> my mind stands up it says hey you know what <laughs> today you don't have to bend your body <laughs> right so you can eat a little bit more then i eat one day i instantly regret but i love that regret because then i become more disciplined right, right. so it it's it's like yeah. i don't damage too much like even if i cheat i cheat just enough so that i still can get back yeah right right the, the the you should not go to a point of no return where you have eaten so much that next day i can't practice yeah so i push it to the maximum so you should know what your maximum and minimum are mm. right right so see health is so crucial if if even if we i'm amazed by what prabhupar did because he would just take rest two hours that was transcendental shuddha sattva you can call the when your intelligence is that high everything else so that is called buddhi yoga you are fixed in your intelligence so much actually your body for example in ayurveda it states when you get angry your whole body prabhupad says that your whole body becomes so polluted you should take a shower 
Wow. It says, <laughs> I was hearing one senior devotee speak. He said that you should take shower because it's so polluting. Oh. So if our no, mind... I've actually experienced that also. Um, although I never made the connection before, but there are times where like I've been so, now that I think of it, maybe angry or just like so negative. Yeah. Have you ever gotten into that? Like yeah, you funk? just feel, yeah. And I've taken a shower and I've actually like felt like I was washing off the negative stuff. And, mm. you know, not always, but... But more times than not, if I do that, I come out and I'm like, not a hundred percent there, but at least like I'm, you know, at at least seventy five percent of the negativity. It's just I mean, physically feels like it's been washed off. So. Yeah, no, no, it does because every cell of your body <clears throat> breathes, yeah. right? Every cell of yeah, your skin yeah. is breathing, and when you are angry like that, there is a lot of pollution in those cells as well. And there's a lot of heat and all these high pitta generated. So when you clean them off, you know, you breathe easier. By the way, like we discussed, 30% of oh, your elimination this, this is, is stool and urine. 70% is your breathing. Breathing and sweating. Breathing and sweating. 30% your, is stool and urine. 70% is sweating and breathing. breathing. You're eliminating toxins, eliminating Yes. Yeah. So your breathing is so crucial. That is why it says... That's the thing we probably spend the least... Like and, and energy or effort on I, it takes me so long it. to sweat. It's a and problem. We don't, and that's and when before I before my diabetes was detected, I stopped sweating for like six months, and I thought that was a great thing. Yeah, I don't have to take a shower because of bad sweat, but then I realized that's the most dangerous thing. Okay, you are sweating like if you there is a TED talk that I watched, and uh, in this this. Uh, I forget the exact name, but if you Google how much, he says for every carbon molecule that you have, two oxygen molecules have to connect, right? CO2 comes out. You breathe in oxygen and CO2 comes out. So for example, if you drink one cup of coffee, it takes four to five hours for all the carbon to get deoxidized from your body, to throw it out. Yeah. It takes four to five hours. So imagine people drink carbonated water, soda, we drink, we eat so much carbohydrates. Imagine mm. the amount of carbon. Mm -hmm. Right? So it takes so much for it to come out. That's why, like I told you the other day, <laughs> when I went to this Sunday feast, I was sitting down and I happened to be like looking at everybody around. Everybody's belly was out. It's not just the belly fat, it's the liver which has enlarged. Belly being out is not a very healthy sign. Until and unless you are like a farmer, you are still working physically hard, but you still need to have a flat. And people don't realize that whatever you can't digest, all these carbohydrates that we eat extra, body stores it. I cannot digest it today, let's throw it into the liver, let's make it belly fat. It keeps building, 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 building until a point where everything is clogged and your heart attack. Very interestingly, you can cleanse it with regular ghee because ghee is a detoxer plus a, an energizer. That's different from what we learn as like is Indians that like ghee is like what makes people get heart attacks. There are so many myths that we see. What happened in the 70s 60s, 70s, when they were trying to make all this. Like, okay, let's take one bad example. In America, doctors used to smoke in the beginning and advertise. Right? Yeah, you yeah. know, the smoking is good for you. Yeah. No, yeah. And it was started Every by doctors. Every cigarette company had their own, you know, doctors. Doctors, would, yeah. yeah. It's, it's okay. Pregnant yeah. women can smoke. Yeah, DDT yeah. is good for you. Yeah. They said DDT is good for you. <laughs> right? And they used to spray kids with DDT. Yeah. They did it in America. What about India then? So the same formula. So they wanted to get people addicted to cheap oils. Okay. And you see the biggest cause of liver damage today is seed oils. Sunflower seed or any seed. By the way, I was looking at the history of canola oil. I didn't read the whole thing. But for World War II, they needed a cheap oil. Okay. They needed some cheap oil in Canada. And they were growing all this canola, which is like literally free. Yeah. 
so they started making canola oil for world war 2 you know machinery and everything <laughs> what do you do after the war you know we have everything set up let's sell it to the people <laughs> Wow. Oh my god. So you know what I mean about the bummer thing though? <laughs> yeah, I do. Because I'm like now I'm like vegan A's. Off the line. Like what? Like <laughs> So so yeah. and and if you look at research papers today, yeah. they are saying how it is omega 6. Omega 6 is inflammation. Most of the inflammation today is because of the seed oils. And that's what they And use. that's not the case with ghee. Ghee is omega 3. Okay, that's it's the, the difference. Wait, hold on. It's a specific type of ghee. It's not non ghee from yes the quality like bazaar quality. Okay, oh, quality. Hotel Brothers. You just called out a whole brand of ghee. <laughs> yeah, non a ghee. Get in touch. <laughs> What? <laughs> See, I may be putting non a ghee on blast. Like, but why? Why? <laughs> Because that's the ghee that I used to buy. <laughs> that's okay, terrible. I, man. One, one. See, the main thing in the ghee. Yeah. because i we get cultured butter cultured butter means enriched okay so the difference between the quality of ghee is the amount of good bacteria see the way i could reverse diabetes i read in one paper i i mean i read paper after paper one of the papers it stated any chronic disease is fed by so your gut has good both good and bad bacteria okay good and bad bacteria when the bad bacteria increases so for example food rots in your stomach there's a bad there's a rot there's a smell there's bad bacteria right you have to cleanse it out you have to throw it out so when your gut over a period of time why do we get colon cancer you eat chemicals chemicals chemically you know manufactured ready to eat foods over a period of time those chemicals 16 hours they are in your belly they keep sticking to your gut and there's no cleanse eventually it becomes cancer it becomes Well, the bad bacteria uh, decays it. So you need to cultivate good bacteria, okay? Good bacteria, and which is the food that increases the good bacteria in your gut is ghee, because ghee has butyrates. Butyrates are the best food for good bacteria. Okay, yogurt, for example, good quality yogurt that is probiotics. Right, I was just about yeah, to say probiotics. Probiotics, probiotics, right? probiotics yeah. and when you take this ghee and that kind of gave me the idea that's why i went 6 months grain free i wanted to feed myself with ghee so i took brahmi ghee so we make four types of herbal ghee so i took brahmi ghee in the morning for the brain improving the nervous system because even the nerves are weak in diabetes then for lunch i used to take trikatu to break down because my digestion was weak and you're this, taking this it just straight ghee right a morning i would take straight brahmi um uh, and then lunch i would take with the lunch so i would stir fry in ghee like i used to make my own vegetable stir fry i used lot of raw banana you know cauliflower everything i wanted to make it tasty because i don't want to miss out you know like feel regret after eating but the ghee used to make it very tasty and then i added the trikatu ghee okay on top after i cooked i would add on top the herbal ghee you cannot cook with it you have to add it on top and then the night my none dinner, of them you can you none of them you can cook with i mean uh, it has herbs right so the plain ghee you cook with the, the and, and this herbal ghee you add on top or right. you can add it in the last phase okay mm. like once the stir fry is done the last you can add it on the and okay. it spreads well right cooks well so mm. then night i would not take dinner for 6 months so i just took ashwagandha ghee five spoons and gradually i started checking sugar after every meal okay the best part was the dinner when my if you eat heavy dinner my sugar used to hit the roof after i take ashwagandha ghee sugar is normal so the raise of sugar levels because of ghee is zero and that's what i saw the biggest cheating they did to today's society was to tell you that fat is bad for you right <clears throat> they told you fat is bad sugar is okay you go to any supermarket checkout aisle what do you see sugar right even yogurt is good for you what did they do they added sugar mm -hmm. and they added not just sugar they added high fructose corn syrup there is fructose and there is glucose your body needs glucose not fructose 
fructose directly hits your liver so you become weak that's why 41% are pre diabetic it's going to be an epidemic in the next 10 years that's why my thesis like i i had a lot of people like even my neighbors in my apartments and all these people say once you get this program right you're going to have millions of people yeah, <laughs> there's right. a neighbor telling me you know? so i can see that just the food system right see in the western world there is a struggle what is good fat they mostly stick to butter as good fat which is good which is now proving to be good but ghee is the best and in ghee what i have seen there is some cheap ghee available like i was telling you i was like how is it possible because i know we get the most cultured the best cultured uh, you know cream. butter cream yeah uh, cultured butter so cultured is there are lot more enzymes mm-hmm. okay and it's so expensive and then i have to make ghee out of it so i have to pay for the commercial kitchen i have to my labor charge i have to make it add herbs on top of it and then i make it and even to sell it for like half the price because before we did this about 6 months we tested with all the cheap ghee a uh, cheap uh, butter you know like sam's club and all these different things you get those butter but they are so processed with chemicals all the culture all the good bacteria dies off mm. and it is with those cows which they give that injection what do you call that r r g r g b s you know so yeah, there, yeah, there yeah. is one uh, um uh, injection to and and also there is an injection for antibiotics and so much so that is pretty cheap because they don't really take care of the cow but in when you do the grass fed oh, another thing i was telling you like i was drinking this milk thinking it is good and i was feeling it so heavy and even the ghee that's when i realized the cows that you need milk and ghee from they need to be fed only grass and herbs and maximum jaggery when you give them heavy grains the milk also becomes heavy to digest so the quality of food what you give to the cow is what the cow gives out so that's why these are specific you know that the quality of the ghee depends on what the cow is eating actually mm. so that's why in our ghee so we take care of that quality so what would you invest in right that's what i realized is that you may have in ayurveda it says you can have so much money but you can enjoy it as much as your health allows you to mm. yeah right so the the best thing and 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 charvaka says rinam kratva gritam piba take loan and eat ghee charvaka has a point <laughs> is that Yeah, Ranam Kratwa Gritam Piba Yavad uh, Jeevet Sutam Sukham Jeevet Do whatever you need to but eat that ghee That's what's Take called uh, Charvaka's ghee. philosophy Charvaka was like like a, like a like a kind of gangster rapper of his time right he was like yo yo get that ghee, <laughs> get that ghee. <laughs> whatever you got to do get that ghee <laughs> but you're saying that's a good thing Yeah you're saying people cuz usually we we you know like whenever I've heard that quote or it it's almost like the height of just enjoyment or materialism but you're saying it's good for for if you take out the enjoyment part yeah yava jivet sukham jivet i want to have a see when i wake up i don't want to be constipated like atmatoza prabhu used to say what is liberation ask a constipated person once he relieves he is li- he is liberated <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one love so, that so that's a good one but i don't want this drama every day yeah, right. as soon as i wake up i have to drink hot water cold water this that and then i have to poop like, yeah what if i get into a routine as soon as i wake up well, there was a keynote speaker okay for a yoga <laughs> international seminar he used to say in kannada he said yaddag yaddag laddi biddag niddi idu eradu idre manushanige en beko he says as soon as you wake up if you clear your belly as soon as you hit the bed if you sleep what else you need in life <laughs> It's true. <laughs> It is true. I mean the older you get the more you realize like, yeah. So yeah. So the point is that the quality of food that you eat so what happens is those who get constipation inflammation your gut is the food the quality of food that you put in there the chemicals if you eat if you don't cook if you just eat outside all the chemicals everything settles there. And when it becomes dry when you cannot digest well when your good bacteria dies away you get a bloated belly you get constipated aches pains all these things what if i invest in quality food okay 
I have no hospital costs. Yeah. I I have I have completely balanced myself. Yeah. Right? So that's the long term thinking you have to have and yeah. oh just what i realized is your ability to work your ability to think depends on one thing and in uh, in ayurveda the essence of the kapha food that you eat is ojas essence of all your digestion is tejas intelligence essence of all your movement vata is prana so you need to have ojas tejas prana but for digestion it is said you need ojas and as long as you have ojas so diabetes thyroid any chronic disease your ojas is gone so ayurveda is pretty simple it's to give you that agni ojas agni is the fire of digestion and the lord gives you ojas we say right ye tejasvi hai ojasvi hai mm. he is a tejasvi he is ojasvi yeah, yeah. so that's the essence yeah and that's the essence of your digestion essence of your you know entire system so agni your fire of digestion and your ojas so this is what ayurveda focuses on and that automatically gives you the intelligence by the way there is another ted talk where your digestion is entirely a function of your gut bacteria so those who had weak digestion it was found that they had bad gut bacteria this gives you more emphasis to eat more ghee because ghee is the only food or rather the best food that actually feeds your good bacteria and uh, i mean you can also can you just take i remember someone had maybe my wife had these pills which had like the probiotics probiotic pills is they, that also they, a, they give you bacteria but what is their food right so you need food? to supply what's, oh, what's their, their food what's yeah. their food yeah bacteria eat right they generate all these enzymes eating what you eat so if you eat ghee along with every food it gives the good bacteria a boost mm -hmm. a strength and energy and let me tell you something which i was telling you my daughter um the second round of vaccination that she had i mean some people went on vaccination but she was perfectly fine before after age of 1 so she got some allergies and and this was like persistent for many a long time we did a ghee detox called virechana now we do it with a lot of our clients after she did that so you take ghee for 5 days on empty stomach and then you let it go through your intestine on the last day you purgate with the uh, with some kind of purgation powder or you can have uh, castor oil you mm. know after she did that 90% of her allergies within the first purgation went away because the bad bacteria was replaced by the good, good bacteria, bacteria yeah. from the ghee from the ghee wow and if we cook uh, like for example chana dal or something or chickpea she would get so much allergy completely changed wow now so, she doesn't have now she doesn't have. i mean minimal so right. we are planning to do one more and that's good you you make a really good case for this sort of you know shifting from like short term perspective to long term this kind of like that's the kicker you know prayas shreyas kind of thing right because mm -hmm. when you see it in that terms it's like yeah well do i want to like like you were saying with the post it right it's like yeah like i can this is intense this is difficult this is hard this feels like a bummer right now but but wow look what the, what what is the payoff right what the to speak off. of when we going back to what you were saying earlier one of the things i'm i'm thinking about now based on what you were saying earlier is like It's one thing when we talk about all these things in isolation. When we think about all these things in terms of my own health, my own project of, you know, mental peace, maybe even ultimately liberation. But when I connect that to Krishna, like who do I want to be in terms of how do I want to show up to serve Krishna in the best possible way I can, mm. to love Krishna, to connect with Krishna, to be that like when we when we talk about being in love with someone mm. it's like i want to be the best version of myself when i'm with her or when i'm with him right so thinking about krishna as like i want to be the best version of myself to be with krishna like all of that makes a lot of sense to me is really inspiring um i want to switch gears a little bit and i want to also be conscious of time um but you've been speaking so much about key um and I know we were talking earlier about how you were you were you were saying 
you're sort of working towards or aspiring towards ahimsa ki, um, but you're not quite there yet. What would you say to an increasing number of devotees who feel like, unless it's ahimsa, we're not going to, we're not going to take dairy just <clears throat> yeah. because of how. And I mean, it, it's documented, right? Yep. What the dairy industry is in this country, but also around the world. And um, but that seems to be at odds with your your sort of you know real push for us to have ghee and to have milk. Yeah, that's that's a very good question, and we've had that time and again. And I think, see, here's what happened. Um, I w- even I was vegan for some time, and what I realized was you don't in Ayurveda it says one should have some cow product in a day. It is there to it purifies the body, either milk, urine, or yogurt, or ghee. They all panchagavya, right? We call it's yes. the purifier. Yeah. So they purify the body. So we need to have it, and that's so a non-negotiable. Question non-negotiable. Yeah, it has to be in every yagya. If we are vegan, we cannot use any other oil. We have to use ghee, right, for yeah. yagya, for yagya purposes. So the source, you have to have ghee. You can't do yagya otherwise, right? There's, you cannot replace it with any oil. So when Prabhupada was here, that was the same question. So Prabhupada still knew that. Prabhupada knew everything. But still he used the butter, he made the ghee, and he applied it practically in that terms. Now in my case, what happened was, even I was kind of looking for an answer. I couldn't, I couldn't live a normal life with the diabetes. I was just active two hours a day and I had two kids. I had to <laughs> make a living, right? But no energy. What do I do? Like even after I started doing yoga, I would be so tired of just after the practice. Oh, really? How will, yeah, yeah, because I was so weak. How will I teach others? So I couldn't take on much projects. So... At the beginning of this, I did a lot of research. And that's when I came to know refined grains, refined flours. Mm. You need fat, which is the best fat and all these things. That's when I came to the conclusion, the answer is the ghee. Okay. Now, I had to find some answer, some quality ghee. Some quality ghee. Okay, and and when I got this trous, so we started making our own because see, even in from India, there is so many ghee that comes in and this and that, but you never really know, right? We just trust because some devotees are selling it and and everything, but and specifically the herbal ghee, the trikatu and all these things, and we just started making. I saw a tremendous change in my energy level. I started reversing the diabetes and whoever I gave it to, it helped them too. Now, many people at that point asked me that question is, is the same question. I said, now I am at the question, like I have no other solution. I need this to save my life. I have no other option. Yeah. So, and something that comes from somewhere, I don't trust. I trust my brand, I trust myself, I trust me and my, my own wife making the ghee and, and we'll do it. And after it brought me back to life, okay, and we concluded, and that was my main conclusion. The first thing that I realized was that this thing needs to be spread, this cure or this benefit. Why should it be only used in emergency? Why shouldn't it become a lifestyle? Right, so this should become a lifestyle. We should eat quality. We should give offer Krishna, like Prabhupada said, everything made in ghee. Everything should be easily available. That's why everybody had a cow before. In India, or anywhere, even in the West, everybody lived an agrarian life. Everybody had a cow. But then, what I realized, without this, I cannot live. I need it every day. I need eight to ten spoons every day. So. To keep buying. So we had to make our own. So we started our own company, right? We started making our own ghee, selling it and at the same time nourishing myself. And I was working through it. I knew it would take six months to a year for me to completely come out of this diabetes. So I had to kept, keep working and keep... And I couldn't think much. I was only worried about this. I couldn't think of getting different... I just had to 
get myself out of it keep working on my phd my wife was doing her bachelor's and masters in ayurveda two kids it was very busy i uh, like how to get ahimsa at that point was i was thinking how to get it at least i proved to myself first point was that this is the important food that you need to have i was convinced of that much and if we take it earlier in life you get more benefited okay the next target that i realized was that yes we have to make it ahimsa in mass okay and i need to do that so that's why my goal the second thing was i was in the middle of this phd and we were just barely able to maintain because this was i had to pay for the commercial kitchen you know raw materials only both of us we couldn't hire much many people we were just struggling to just maintain the business and and teaching classes and i once you get the phd done my goal and i'm working with a couple of devotees to we want to buy a big land somewhere around atlanta florida area like a very big land and that's our goal to start a proper ayurveda college because ghee you should make it in the right way in the right culture and also you should make the herbs available the herbs is what makes the difference like the brahmi ghee it gives you that memory trikatu ghee like this devotee's cholesterol completely reversed you know with that trikatu ghee yeah like that so each one so we really want to set up and that is my long term goal and 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 i today even today i had a meeting with this one devotee and we are working on getting you know bigger place right. and uh, we are looking how to raise money for that how much we need and expand it in a big way but ayurveda is not so famous right now you have to do it you have to do it in a very you know a way so educating people so i am completing this book so one after the other so my eventual goal is to make this available in a big way by taking care of and i can't do it myself like i cannot <laughs> right you cannot take care of the bar as well as making the ghee and everything yeah. you need a team so i set this up so like you should have a long term goal so at least i am seeing like there were some people who had thyroid issues liver issues so many devotees non devotees to yoga practitioners many of them the moment they take our ghee most of their health issues come to normal so the quality ghee does benefit everyone mm. i have seen that i don't i am completely convinced of that now how to it has to be also profitable because one big loss and that's it you are bankrupt right you have to balance that as well so we are once she will be done in 6 months i will also be done hopefully in 6 to 8 months with my diabetes uh, this and once we are done then we want and along with my final thesis i want to spread awareness in a big way and cultivate a team yeah that's my goal so have enough volunteers enough have a team non profit you know all these things everything in place and spread this with a mission see one thing i good is being in iskon i learned fundraising and i'm <laughs> that's a good thing mm. i learned but where to use it for you know you have to use it for something like this where initially we get the funds we buy all this and then that is self sustainable mm. you know eventually you want to get to, get to that point not just you know more cows more funds no? yeah. <laughs> we have to make that into that project so it takes a lot of learning it takes a lot of learning lot of convincing and and also the business to grow that way it should be see anything we do it just on you have to give quality it should not be just you know charity right when we give back and people appreciate it changes them yeah. then they give everything right so even i am fine tuning fine tuning fine tuning my practice and 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 what i'm seeing in the last 2 years one and a half two years whoever is consulting with us joining our long term programs they are getting so much benefit and whoever is buying the ghee they are buying more it's for our own health now eventually if we put all this experience and this you know together i should be able to put together a place 
where we can manage this because now we know what to do the eventual product all the benefits everything yeah so i am cultivating towards that but right now my situation was like this and there are plenty of people out there for whom this ghee is a real necessity to turn their life around and and i hope like we were also thinking we'll we'll buy from india this and that you know i'm sagi to manufacture to sell and we'll do that but then my wife was very cr- critical she said what you manufacture you can guarantee the quality yeah right i'm just some source supplier and things like that no you should do that so we should take responsibility so that's my now that i have seen that it really works Yeah. and uh, i went on a tour of canada i met a lot of this french people and uh, from yoga and many of them had health issues mind issues trauma issues and he helped so many so many just wow. yeah. you're such a you're, you're you're it's so clear like you're so convinced you're like yeah, yeah, you're yeah. a he missionary <laughs> you're like a evangelist <laughs> evangelist yeah. um, see my gurmara told me cow is the center of civilization Huh. right to kill cow is to end civilization he is there is but how do you start protecting it on a mass scale first of all you have to show it's he's so beneficial you know you have to get people on your side yeah. Yeah. so when you do get people to do either yoga or uh, ayurveda chanting in either way people become favorable yeah. so what's an easier way to spread in a big way mm. is ayurveda yoga you know so that's so the ahimsa uh, thing is something that's the end goal but at the moment it's not possible right and it's not and 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 i appreciate i mean i'm not sure how i feel about it you know I, i think there's there's room for some healthy debate and disagreement but i really appreciate your sort of passion and conviction that like this is just too important this is what i'm getting from you that this is yeah. too important to wait until you you're you're you know able to get to that end goal that in the meantime even if it's not a himsa you know beg borrow steal but get that ghee get that ghee <laughs> i think get prabhu i think that it's really powerful that you you know you can say from your own experience that Absolutely. you reversed your diabetes yeah, from that that's... who can say that people just live with like you know doing the whole th- whatever uh you know insulin shots and yeah. doing that whole thing for the rest of their life but to reverse it that's a huge deal so you should like i don't know show the receipts and stuff like in a in a, in if you want to do it on social media or whatever i think it'd be super powerful yeah yeah so that's what uh, with my new books upcoming books yeah. i have it's not just that i did it but the whole manual yeah because my goal is not 5 10 people i want to do it on a mass scale see yeah. 41% of the us uh, adult population so that's like uh, adult population will be 200 million right yeah and you take 40% of that that's about 80 90 million Shh. people today are pre-diabetic that's in terrible. America right so you want to have a manual see the whole process of phd is to systematize right you do this you do this you right. do this right it's yeah. very systematic and and then you can implement it on a mass scale so you, that's you, the goal do you think you'll get like uh targeted by you know big pharma or like the insulin industry or something i mean what you're suggesting is pretty revolutionary in terms of like i, I could imagine a lot of people's sort of economic interests would be threatened by oh, that okay. right yeah, totally. see here's the thing is that when i went to india to do some more research okay and i there was a couple of ayurveda college professors whom i interviewed to know how many people really fight it out once mm. they get diabetes how many really want to reverse it he said most of them just live with it yeah. very few only if they show interest we give them all the information from ayurveda so that they can fight it out even then it's not easy right. said most people kind of give up because diabetes fogs your mind too mm. even for me to get inspired it had to be like some samskara or my guru's blessing it's only by my guru maharaj you know he sponsored my post graduation in yoga then i had to inspire myself my guru maharaj has given this gift wow. now i have to use it you know it's like <laughs> wow. and when i read that verse and it's kind of 
I pushed, pushed, inspired myself, and and finally, and I I thought to myself that if I really do this, it will be revolutionary for the field of yoga because, and for the now one thing is that it's not easy for people to change en mass also, right? You can maybe out of this ten percent may do that, okay? And the thing is. i am not giving a drug what the because diabetes can be solved with lifestyle and yoga diet lifestyle and yoga it's nothing to do with drugs only if you become insulin dependent even then you can fight it out if you have the will power so if you are not introducing a pharmaceutical drug or something right that's when the competition starts i am giving a new drug that will just boom done no i am giving this is what you do and if you actually do it it will change yeah and many people do it but they don't have direction yeah and this is common today because even the medical industry is not ready for the toll it's going to be huge diabetes is not just about diabetes people die of heart attacks i know few days ago i came to know a person who was taking metformin and insulin lately for 18 years and he died of a heart attack so these medicines don't save you these medications okay the, if you it it gradually it just keeps you going that's mm-hmm. it but it doesn't really heal you mm-hmm. so you have to fight it out through lifestyle and yoga you know you have to do it so how many i'll be able to inspire like we give them wellness so wellness is allowed so i don't think it will be only thing is this is a supplement food i am not giving them a drug so it won't be you know it's 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 just that i am systematizing it today intermittent fasting is very famous yes i spoke to a lot of people and they are in pain like in the sense <laughs> they are fasting but they are doing it like really but if you get into what yoga and everything it will be natural right your right. ojas is there if you eat the right food like ghee it will make it natural mm-hmm. in fact in ayurvedic text it says if you get diabetes live like a rishi you have to live like a sage you have to be very disciplined wait it says that in our in the text that if you get diabetes you have to live like a sage very disciplined in fact any chronic disease it says live like a sage means mm. you have to eat very controlled you have to exercise you have to balance mm. you should not overeat all these things so they are Rupa Goswami is telling us much before. Yeah. Be disciplined, don't overeat everything. Yeah. But if you get it, you have to do it anyway. Yeah. But better to do it before. So a self analysis is is very important for a devotee. Coming back to our first topic, yeah, is that every devotee needs to analyze, like in Ayurvedic uh, questionnaire, dosha questionnaire, we what we call, which we give to our clients. so we can tell you what you are prone to or if you are already there or if you're in person you can do the with the pulse, pulse reading yeah. yeah like i took your pulse yes. i could immediately understand okay. oh he's he said really the his first like, words yeah. were oh my god i'm not even <laughs> joking that's what he said <laughs> so uh, in the car on the drive over with krishangi krishangi was like so excited she's like i'm so excited <laughs> it's like you know i've done a couple of these podcasts and i don't think i've ever seen you so excited She was like, "No, no, I'm not excited about the podcast. I'm excited that afterwards he'll take your pulse. <laughs> okay. Have him take your pulse." And then she 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 knows my psychology, so she could tell I was like, uh, and she was then then she kind of eased up. She was like, uh, "You know, if you want to, if you want to, you know, <laughs> just see how you feel." Like, but no, no, we'll definitely do. But yeah, yeah. it's it's so crucial that if we don't do this over a period of time, see, as you go higher in Krishna consciousness, yeah. your challenges will be more mm. your challenges will be more and the biggest challenge like we were discussing if you are mentoring people are you guiding them spiritually or just administration right if you are mentoring if you are mentoring people yeah like i am uh, running a spiritual institution yeah i can mentor in two ways one i just keep him busy for the benefit of the institution right or i really mentor him 
to heal his my book my ayurveda book begins with your health is at five levels physical health mental health intellectual health right uh, then your asmita right your self progress and spiritual health okay so we call physical right the second is prana sorry the reliance of the koshas yeah prana yeah. yeah five koshas yeah so when you look at somebody you a guru or in ayurveda you assess what he can do what is he weak in yeah what is he prone to right so you should be able to give him a diet lifestyle and a practice which he can carry with him in a long term basis are we yeah. doing that yeah right proper used to tell oh you travel you don't travel he could see the mental tendencies yeah even prabhupad prescribed so many times when uh, balimardan in australia he wrote to prabhupad i am having headaches okay prabhupad said you are constipated okay <laughs> and prabhupad said you take this turmeric this thing and you know then you will be fine and he took that <laughs> it was okay <laughs> so how could he diagnose mm. see he knew see i am not saying that we should all but these sciences see, that's why the brahmanical sciences to guide people yeah astrology right yoga mm-hmm. sanskrit scriptural mm. then ayurveda right then there are few other sciences uh, all these allied sciences enneagram. but if you see <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that mm-hmm. are you familiar with the enneagram enneagram it's a like a personality typing but i mean it's not it's 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 not vedic per se but mm. in other words there are certain tools and resources right and and i'm being a little facetious because we have some some devotee friends of ours who are like super into it oh. yeah. but these things can be really helpful i mean and yeah. i've i've found things like you know enneagram or whatever helpful like whoever comes to me yeah. i do an horoscope chart first mm. oh really to see what diseases they are prone to once they join our full program wow so i mean if they are se- severely diseased already there's no point in looking you already know <laughs> what's there but if they are kind of you know how soon can it be solved we take family history so all these things so you can intertwine they are all interconnected sciences yeah. ayurveda yoga you know astrology the solution is right there yeah your food changes your karma yeah your food can change your karma your fasting can change your karma yeah can le- change your level of intelligence and that's the main thing coming to our theme what i felt at that point of time for me ayurveda and yoga was a necessity it was a necessity because my health was so bad right. mind was so bad and i was coaching a few people even after as i was coming back it took it took a long time but now i see that it's in a rhythm hmm. right this is the rhythm of your life right what they say so that is what it is so ayurveda is the rhythm see hmm. even at the age of 90 you follow the same routine you get into such a solid routine that the routine carries you yeah yeah so you that's the thing so we are a little late like i'm in my 40s right you are in your 40s 30s we should have done this by 16 that's the age when you have to get into routine that's the yeah. time we are busy the only routine in i college. had was um cereal in the morning that's <laughs> how that cereal except the kadashi then we had <laughs> cereal the night before yeah that's, that's right <laughs> But yeah. 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 <laughs> but the better late than never, right? I yes. mean, we should have done it at 16 or whatever, but but it's not too late. Is not is, too is late. your message? So yeah. so for my kids, I'm we homeschool and my goal, what I feel as a parent, our duty giving them Krishna consciousness, yes. But the most important thing we will give them along with Krishna consciousness is discipline. Because that they cannot get from anywhere. yeah right only if they are self motivated self disciplined there are very few that's what i'm saying when you come to krishna consciousness those who are disciplined they progress faster just like sukadev goswami is already liberated heard one thing about krishna that's it he's done he didn't have to go through all the previous steps he's right. already gone through there yeah we 
come with our drawbacks mm. how much you are able to overcome them that's the sadhana yeah and and it may be in any field financial health but health is crucial for all different things health is vital right. if your health is not there that's it you cannot do any form of yoga right cuz how are you going to have the energy or the strength or the ability to do anything else then? so yeah. this basic what i felt that's why i wrote this upcoming book called ayur yoga synergies so that's my book and then the mudra i showed you and and this is to give a manual what i feel was so crucial is that and i've met so many devotees also i've spoken to enough devotees now and they feel they need a proper diet you know we cannot just keep complaining like other day i was doing this uh, bhakti viksha class for another temple and i was speaking about discipline and you know benefits of discipline chanting and <laughs> and then one you would he said uh, i was talking about ekadashi why the fasting is very important because on ekadashi your digestion is the weakest according to ayurveda it is the weakest up till the new moon yeah up to full moon if you take herbs it benefits you mm. so you should not eat too much anyway on ekadashi then he said oh the temple they prepare a feast <laughs> Ekadashi pizza. Ekadashi <laughs> pizza. So I told that devotee see you can do two things you can keep blaming and eating and harm yourself. But temple is open place for anybody. Right? It's open place for anyone. So there are sick people, there are old people, pregnant women. So everybody needs to be taken care. You act as per your discipline. If you are disciplined, you take very little. and you don't go with the mass mentality you have to cultivate that individual discipline right yeah. and when we do that that individual discipline right and that was my biggest take away learning in this diabetes and everything because there is the verse right mukam karoti vachalam mm-hmm. pangum yeah. langete girim yat kripa tamam vande shri gurum din ran mm-hmm. and i tell many of my clients will i be able to reverse my diabetes will i be able to reverse thyroid so when they ask i say there are two ways to look at it a disease first way to look at it our own drawbacks difficulties oh my god if i was born in a liberated family i would have been much better you know something like that you can keep blaming and suffering right right or Always you can me. say this is the challenge set for me by krishna I went through the worst. I made mistakes. Even if you make big mistakes, I made mistakes. But then you think about it, and then say, "Okay, I made this. Is there a way out? Yeah. Is there something I can do about myself? Can I improve? Can I do? Can I do the impossible? Believe in yourself. Okay. Make a systematic long-term plan. Right for Krishna consciousness. That includes your diet, your health." where do you want to see yourself keep testing every yeah. now and then and i tell them if you see a drawback or a disease as a challenge given by krishna for you to jump okay and i begin my book with this point saying my guru maharaj when he lost his leg in mayapur mm-hmm. when he was asked about this question he said krishna will not give you a challenge that you cannot overcome mm. yeah but he will make you stretch to the max he will to he wants to take you to the next level but you have to do this jump he's watching you are you ready to take that leap if you say oh my god i am not ready for this challenge so then okay krishna say okay i'll wait yeah so you have to take the bull like by that. the horns and take any challenge given to you because proper said impossible is a world in the full, full dictionary. dictionary so you have to make the plan my guru maharaj always says a devotee understands in sattva if you understand shastra you can understand anything you you make the plan that is why we call it buddhi yoga right we follow the intelligence and lord reveals the road map but you have to be that's what he did to arjuna you just become you know nimitta Mm. and we are also becoming nimitta even i feel whatever i am doing it's not that i am doing it's just that it came to a point i said told krishna i can't take it anymore 
now you take me through it and from then on everything happened so on a, yeah on a more practical note if someone feels that they connect with what you're saying right now but like what um prabhu said that it's it might seem harsh or it might seem difficult what is the like amount of time where you can be like i'm going to try this for this amount of time and if it if i see some change then great and i'll continue or if maybe this is not for me what what is that amount of time you would would you say so anything requires 3 months 3 months substantial change so okay. you enjoy the change for example you day you do ekadashi fast one day right so next take other say i am not doing i that was you know too tough or things like that but you do it the next time and you balance it so you do it for like 2 3 months and you see every time you fast if you prepare properly because it takes a preparation you actually begin to see long term benefits you become more disciplined right so similarly when you take up some yoga practice i see people get benefited within 2 weeks 3 weeks but once they do it for more than 2 months right one uh, there was one uh, lady from california she read my mudra book and she was doing ashtanga yoga for a long time and she had so many injuries i taught her systematically how to do it injury free within one month she got back to her previous practice injury free she began to enjoy now we are in the fourth month so she said now i enjoy doing it every day mm. so 3 months is a time any herb any practice anything gets into a good routine mm. and and that's the time you give yourself and once at that point even if you have because some people take time to get results some people are you know such karma or you know physical or mental situation you take time but if you see you are moving towards see everyone has intuition even if you don't see the direct results you see you are moving there yeah. yeah right so if you get there then you have to be inspired to dig deeper and that's what happened to me every day every month you know i saw see i saw the results i saw the results in others as well in my friends clients devotees everyone and gradually it inspired me to do the next step next step like that so give it 3 months get into a good solid routine you know i got prabhu's key i'm looking forward to doing something with you prabhu really i'm i i want to change something about my about my health my gut my belly just feeling more energy to keep up with my kids and keep up my job and my family and and maybe just going i mean just having a gym membership and going now and then is not the answer there's yeah. there's a there's a lot more diet stuff involved there's yoga which is i do believe in that yoga can help in that way like yeah. stretching and stuff so it feels really like even when i do just like a real simple youtube 10 minute youtube yoga thing it feels really good but to have someone like you like guiding me would be probably this yes. good next step yeah because in i really loved this point when i explain i explain this all the time that in bhagavad gita krishna talks about two things right jnana and vijnana yeah jnana means i know i am atma i know i have to be in ecstasy you know i know i know i know like when we began yeah. bhakti is everything we know but ultimately and we also say in the bhagavad gita uh, we say the three types of proof right pratyaksha anumana and uh, sh- shastra shabda yeah. and we say shabda praman but in the yoga text it says the ultimate pramana is pratyaksha mm. because you take from the scripture if the jnana if that knowledge isn't converted into vidnyana your faith will not be strong right yeah. we need to actually experience something. experience yeah. so 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 the more you experience and if you if you read the uh, three types of faith is 16th or 17th 17th chapter i guess the three levels of faith three types of faith mm, yeah right so all that we are doing with our krishna consciousness with every way for example for me faith in yoga and that's how the vedic system is designed faith in astrology faith in ayurveda faith in yoga all this eventually leads to narayana only mm. so for me i am doing yoga but it is a part of sadhana bhakti as i read in you know and if i look at it that way 
and my physical strength which i got back the movement itself is directed is a science given by narayana so i'm following a science of given which is given by the lord yeah and eventually i convert it into remembrance the ojas shakti that i get eventually i remember the lord with every movement with every mm, breath beautiful right yeah and that's that that conversion is what matters so when i eat if i am into a completely healthy state of mind thinking i am going to eat only the right enough amount actually in if you read uh, hatha yoga pradipika it says when a yogi reaches the first you know uh, burp the you don't eat more than that yeah right you stop there and it says you consciously become aware of the food you sit in vajrasana or you take a short walk mm. and you make you make sure that the food is digested right you just don't go to sleep <laughs> right? right you you become aware that mm. digestion because that is lord narayana mm. i just don't start playing video games or randomized activities i actually there's something focus. sacred you're actually like yes. connecting you, with lord narayana in a very intimate way actually it says and as you do that as you get disciplined as your chakras open up mm. your external hearing reduces or disturbance your inner hearing so you hear sacred sounds each chakra has a sacred sound like a drum flute and it says all these sounds you gradually begin to hear more what i want to say is in the last sentence he says when you completely withdraw from outside when you are fully disciplined when you are fully focused inside all that remains within you om tad vishnu paramam padam you see the lotus feet of vishnu in your heart and this is swatmarama writes in hatha yoga pradipika that's amazing wow i had no idea <laughs> yeah. so directly like he's saying devotional, you, right? you see yeah. the lord lotus feet of you experience you experience the mm. lotus feet mm. and that he says is the greatest uh, uh you know object in the heart it's amazing imagine if someone were to be like hey you know you can do this that you know do xyz and you'll experience a lotus feet of krishna in your heart directly experience it. it's like why wouldn't we do that yeah. why because i'm attached to bread and protein <laughs> shakes it's like <laughs> i mean i say this but i still have a struggle but yeah, yeah. Um, well thank you prabhu i appreciate all you do to come and and coming here and talking with us um if you want to get in touch uh with gornath raj prabhu i'm going to put a description in the description i'll put his contact info his website go look at his ghee um it's it's i really believe because he's been telling me about it literally all day so i'm really excited to try it we give it we gave it to our son tonight the brahmi one to see to help his um calm him down for getting to sleep if you have children uh his his wife also is uh, has now a masters in ayurveda as well and and she's probably focused more on the child, child pa- yeah. part of it so you know a wealth of knowledge so please go check him out um his store and his website and all that stuff his books that are coming out the books that he already has out which are the you know the juicing book the mudra book there's um the, all the recipes uh they are really really fantastic thank you again prabhu really appreciate it Thank you so yeah. much. It was amazing. Yes, <laughs> great. Thank you so much. Amazing, <laughs> inspiring, uh, a little bit of a bummer, but maybe in the best. <laughs> Let's work on him after in offline. In the best ways, but yeah, we can work on it. We'll take care of you after. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Thank you.